Don't be right. I have no art background, but I've learnt a lot taking two-piece classes and watching tutorials. I've got a grip on lines and balance, visual triangles, and dimension. I just can't grasp grounding, and I wonder if my pages suffer for it. Anyone have a basic description of what that means? Glittergal, can you help Dawn B get a grip on grounding? Of course I can. Grounding is a gestalt visual concept, meaning it's something that psychologically makes an image easier for someone to see and understand. Other things in this group of concepts include the similarity of several images, the proximity of one thing to another so it's able to be seen as a grouping, and leading lines that create flow from one element to another. Grounding in this way can be really literal. If you want to draw a picture of a house, it can look like it's floating in the air until you draw a horizontal line on either side of the house to show the ground. Even when you're not drawing a picture of a house, horizontal lines can help make your design feel natural to the eye. Today I'll see if I can demonstrate that concept with a new page for you and I'll be using the new Everyday Eclectic Collection from Echo Park. It's brand new in the store and it will coordinate really well with any Hamley screen print stash you might already have in your collection as it's designed by Allison Craft, the same designer behind Hamley's uh, scrapbooking products. This collection has great multicolored prints on the A-sides, including doilies, wood grain, chevron, tech skins, hot air balloons, cameras, and clouds. The B-sides are single colored patterns that will work really well in either small pieces or as full page backgrounds. The collection pack also includes two sticker sheets, one with three alphabets, and one's big and two are smaller, and a few little accents, and then another sticker sheet with all sorts of accent motifs to match the papers. Both those sticker sheets are 12 by 12, and all the elements are available individually if the pack isn't the best option for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on a layout today. I'm starting with two landscape 4x6 photos and I've matted them on a pink um, pattern paper and then just cut a little corner piece to fit behind there. And I have two other pieces that I'm starting with. One journaling card with a map print and a little um, flag and this 9x9 square. Now all of these papers are from that same collection pack and I've gone ahead and added the 9x9 square of stars to the music note paper in the 12 by 12. I know roughly where my photo is going to go just like I showed you there before I um, moved them aside and I want to use a hexagon mask to spray some ink onto the page which can help create grounding because it can have a pattern for embellishments to be layered on top of. So it's just adding another layer and layers can often help with grounding. So I'm using some pink uh, Mr. Huey's Mist and this mask to just roughly spray um, either side and then the photos are gonna go in the center. Now I'm gonna cover up quite a lot of this misting um, so don't, don't be too freaked out about how much is sprayed and you will be able when you see the final version you can take this this step out if you don't like mist um, and you would just get to this point and attach everything here without having um, that that ink in the background but it can really help bring some depth and just give um, a little bit of a pattern for your embellishments to stick to okay so now I want to build um, some title on that aqua square and it has this little tag at the top now really I flipped this upside down because I liked the map print in this direction and I wanted my little pennant at the top but now I have upside down words on top of that little pennant so I'm going to use an additional pennant to layer on top and this is a craft colored one from the sticker sheet it also had a piece that I didn't want it had little um, birds at the end so I've cut them off to save for later and then I'm just going to layer so I have these two little pennants, one craft and one white. Now one's completely horizontal, it's straight, and then the, the craft one is just at a little bit of an angle. And this gives me a place to ground my title. So I want to start with my um, letter stickers here. And by the way, I, I'm, this I put a pop dot underneath this pennant, but in just a second I'm going to take it off because I realized that if I put the letter stickers on top of the pop dot, it wasn't going to work very well. Um, so now I can use the horizontal line of that white pennant, which is, is straight horizontal, it's not at an angle. I can use that as a grounding line to place my letter stickers. And 
it doesn't mean that the letter stickers have to be exactly on that line. It means that I'm using it as a guide. So I'm following the same horizontal as, as is created in that pennant. So essentially there'll be parallel lines. It also works to put it straight on that line and use it as if you were writing on lined paper. But having a horizontal element there at all really helps to bring in the title and make it really easy to read. And once all the embellishment, everything is done here, you'll see how just little lines like that in the background can really help the whole design come together. And that's really what grounding is all about. It's just about having different elements of the page make sense instead of floating up in the air. So I'm going to add the tile here with a few different steps. I'm starting with the small letter stickers. And these are the, the everyday eclectic letter stickers. And, and then I'm going to use some stamping and some thickers to spell out my title. For this small word in the middle of the title, I'm using the Stepping Stone Alphabet Stamps from Studio Calico. And this is in two parts. So you first stamp a solid letter, and I'm doing that with colored ink. I'm using Speckled Egg, which is a nice turquoise um, from Jenny Bolin Inks. And then over the top, you stamp an outline. So you put the color down with the solid letter first. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm using the same brown ink pad that I used to edge all those different pieces of paper to stamp the outline over the top. And th the outline makes it really easy to read while you can still include whatever color you want, which means you can make rainbow colored titles, which sometimes can be really difficult on the eyes to read, but when you outline them all in the same color, presto, it's really easy to see what you're spelling out. So it's a really good stamp set if you like stamp titles because you can use all sorts of color and it's really quick to create that two layer effect. Then for the final bit of my title, I'm going to use some thickers. These are from um, the Shoreline collection. And I'm starting with that D overlapping ever so slightly on the photo. Now, if you don't like anything on the photos at all, you can move it over, but keep it as close as possible so you don't end up with any gaps. Now, I wanted to make sure I added some grounding at the bottom, so I've added that washi tape horizontal line to close off my title to have that as my grounding line for the bottom word. With the title in place, I'm going to use what's in my title to inform the rest of my embellishment. There's a bit of design on the pattern paper from the background still showing here that I want to cover up in this corner. So that's where I'm going to start and I'm going to repeat that same washi tape, the turquoise stripe. And I have this little sticker from the accent sheet that I want to add on top. Um, but if I just add that sticker, then I'm going to end up with a, a gap between the washi tape and the photo. So the spacing then is not going to work to tell me that everything there is one matching piece. I end up with this trapped wide space, which is where I have a gap in between the photo and the embellishment that just doesn't look like I've placed everything in the right spot. So I, I can't move the photos at this point because they're already glued down and um, there's no other way to kind of move things around. So the best option here is to add another piece to fill that gap. So I've had a look and grabbed another piece of washi tape that will match my color scheme. So I'm going to introduce one that's pink with polka dots and then put the sticker on top of that. And now I don't have any gaps between the turquoise tape and the sticker. Everything then works together. So now I want to make sure that I have some embellishment to tie all that together. I'm gonna to put the layout aside now and show you what I'm gonna make for that. And these are with the mistable thickers. Like the name says, it's really, really easy to color them any color you want using mist because you can just spray it onto the fabric that's on top. But I wanted to show you a few other options. You can use the ink from an ink pad. So you'll get different colors with different techniques. So you'll get this really bold color if you use the direct to the ink pad technique. So I'm just putting the ink straight onto that fabric. So it picks up pretty much the same color as it looks like in the ink pad because you're doing the same thing. You're saturating fabric with ink. But there are other ways to get a really subtle look. So in this case, I'm going to take some ink and put it on cotton wool. You could do this straight from the ink pad, but it's really easy to put it on a craft sheet and then use the cotton wool to transfer the ink onto the fabric thicker. This makes it a lot 
um, softer and it's really easy to shade. You wouldn't necessarily have to use cotton wool either. You could use a sponge, you can use foam, whatever is, um, works well for you. But you can use this just around the edge or you can use it on one side to get one side darker than the other. You can use all sorts of um, fading techniques to get whatever coloring you want. And of course you can do this in any color. I'm just gonna use the same color throughout to give you some examples. And it's really easy to clean up off the craft sheet because then I can just soak everything else up with the cotton wool. Now you can also use paint on top. So um, to show you the same color, the matching acrylic paint um, to the ink pad. So both of these are in chewing gum from the Jenny Bolin um, Paints and Inks. So you can use the dabber on top, you can use a paintbrush, you can finger paint it on. Um, I use this uh, brush for pretty much all my painting lately and it's, um, it's a water brush but I don't have any water in it. So if I want to use it with watercolors then I fill it up but otherwise I just um, use it empty with things like acrylic paint and mist where I don't want to water them down. So you can just paint right over the top, you have complete control of your brush so if you want to fade in and out, you want to leave some of it white, you can, um, but it's really easy to just paint over the whole thing and give a really even color. And with this, the edges will pick up the paint color a lot more than that stamped version. With the really dark stamped version, you can see that white halo around the edge because it's hard to get the ink to go around the edges. It's much easier with a paintbrush so I can get an even and coloring all the way around. Um, so that's the difference between those two. And of course you can do some other things. Um, you can actually emboss these. Now this doesn't work with the foam uh, thickers, but you can use a Versamark or any other heat embossing, um, or embossing ink pad and embossing powder right on top of the fabric thicker and then hit it with a heat gun and you'll get that molted, um, melted texture on top. So here's a little closer look at all those different versions. With the embossed version, you will see the fabric texture through. If you don't wanna see the fabric texture at all, just do another layer of embossing and then you'll get more of an enamel look. But you will lose a little bit of detail around the edge of the shape. That's pretty much it. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and find a great spot for these on the layout. I've combined the clouds with a hot air balloon sticker from the sticker sheet and used the sticker flat so that then the clouds overlap and have that bit of texture on top and added one cloud with some polka dot stamps over the faded, um, faded edge there too. And I brought in some of that pink polka dot washi tape underneath the balloon and truthfully, clouds and balloons are some of the only embellishments that make sense without grounding. They do need to be floating in the air. But what I wanted to do here was to make this all read as one piece from the balloon right down to the tile. I want it to all seem like one column of, um, of stuff, uh, all different things in one thing rather than um, all different pieces. So that misting that I did right at the beginning, that helps with this, but so does the tape. And also the tape being on the diagonal, those two different spots with the photos in the middle means that even with a lot of embellishment, your eyes are gonna go to the picture in the middle because the repetition of that hot pink polka dot means that um, you'll look from one to the other. So just a little um, idea there. And also one last thing with the grounding there, the clouds are overlapping and very close to the balloon. So that means that you'll see them all as one group. So that's that that similar concept of grouping. Um, there are all these basic concepts of what makes sense to our eye. Here's the last finished detail. I added the writing a little bit at the bottom and a little bit at the top and then just repeated those same small elements. So um, a little bit of pink washi tape, a little bit of aqua and one cloud, and then added a small little heart sticker in the same color as the balloon. Um, just all um, pretty simple embellishment, but scattered around the page and a really limited color palette. So you're just seeing aqua, turquoise and pink. There's not a lot of um, extra variety here. Now, your challenge this week is to try grounding on your own layout. So see what you can do with horizontal lines and then add things on top um, and see if it is something that you really like in your designs and see if it makes your pages make a little more sense to you or if it's a technique that you never want to try again. Just give it a whirl this week. I'd love to see your pages in the gallery. Thanks so much for having a look at this week's layout. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.